welcome to the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. Uh, I'm Johnny Canan on this week's show. I'm delighted to be joined by former All-Ireland winning captain and current Sunday game analyst Ursula Jacob. Ursula, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks, Charlie. Um, so this week's episode, it's all about the All-Ireland Senior Camogie quarterfinals. We're going to preview both quarterfinals. Uh, on Saturday, August 21st in Parky Cueve, we have the meeting of Wexford and Kilkenny at 5 p.m. And then the other quarterfinal is Tipperary and Waterford at 6.45 p.m. Two Mount Watering clashes. And really looking forward to both these games. Galway and Cork, of course, are waiting in the, for the winners in the semi-finals. So we'll begin, Ursula, with your own county, Wexford. Um, true to the all Iron quarterfinal, the knockout stages for the first time in a couple of years. Uh, great achievement for Wexford. Um, is there any particular reason you think they've made the knockout stage this year more so than other years? And is there anything you notice different about any improvements? Yeah, look, it's it's a it's a massive deal that Wexford are back at you know quarter final stage. I think the goal definitely at the start of this year for Wexford was to possibly reach a league final uh, and win it, to get back into Division One league for next year, and also to reach the knockout stages of the championship. Now, disappointingly enough, they lost the the league semi to Down, but. Look, the, the main thing was how their performances were going to fare out in the championship. And to be fair, look, they had two big wins against Limerick and Offaly. And um, yeah, the penalty against Limerick in the first game, you know, they got barely over the line, but that was a huge win and it set them off well for the, the group games. And then Offaly, you know, they, they managed to find the net four times and that, that really paved the way for a big win there. And then obviously their last game against Tipperary was going to decide who was going to come out on top. And for 55 minutes of that game, Wexford were re- were within a couple of points of Tipperary. I was really impressed by him. Um, I thought they put in a solid performance. They would be disappointed with the four goals they conceded, but it just showed maybe Tip's experience at this stage, the strength of their panel, and Tip probably finished with a stronger team than they had started out. So lots of positives for Wexford, um, but crucially, you know, it was important. One of their main goals this year was to reach the knockout stages. Yeah, I suppose, like you mentioned, they were back in Division 2 for the league. And I suppose probably helped them to get, you know, a few games under the belt, a few wins, build up a bit of confidence. I know they fell uh, in the semi-final to down, but look down our senior team this year too. Uh, so, you know, no disgrace in that. And um, But like you said, they got a bit of momentum in the league and... You know, the win against Limerick in the first round was crucial. So who would you see as their key players this year? Well, look, at the, the big name player that you can think of uh, that they've back in the team this year is Katrina Park. You know, I obviously played with Katrina throughout those brilliant years for Wexford Camogie. And she's always a brilliant talent. Probably was it, had a quiet game for her standards against Tipperary. But going into the quarterfinal against Kilkenny, she's going to be a a massive threat up front. You know, Katrina is one of the most skillful players in Ireland and, you know, fair play to her for coming back into the setup this year and she's going to bring great experience. But there's loads of girls around it. I like the Wexter team about how attacking they are. They're not afraid to take on their player. You know, Kira O'Connor at centre-back is a key player for Wexford. She's got all the skills of the game. She's very athletic. She's well able to score. We saw a great point that she got against Tipperary in that group group game. And she's grown in confidence in each game as well. Then obviously up in, in attack, you have the likes of Chloe Fox, who will probably play in or around the full forward line and possibly move out the field. And then some of the, the kind of maybe newer girls to the team, like I was really impressed with Sarah um, Harden, uh, Kenny in the corner. Um, then you have some of the girls like Jackie Quigley, Anya Lacey, who bring the experience. And then, you know, you have Amy Cardiff. Um, so there's girls right across the field. And I think there's a nice balance to Wexford because some of these girls are very young. And I think when you're that kind of young and maybe inexperienced in some ways, it, the one thing you have in your favour is you have that fearlessness. Maybe you don't get as nervous going into games. Uh, Wexford are probably on, you know, bonus territory now. They've got out of the group stages. They're going in as big underdogs against Kilkenny. So I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of pressure on them. So I think that's going to stand to Wexer too. And in fairness to Kevin Tatton, you know, last year was his first year involved and that wasn't easy because it was so impacted by COVID. Whereas this year you can see a system that Wexford are trying to play. They're trying to carry the ball and have the off the run, off the ball runners with him. So I think that's standing to Wexer this year. 
Yeah, I, I was impressed with him against Tipperary, how comfortable and, and confident they look on the ball. Um, I think it was a wing, wing back at one stage came out and, you know, banged the ball off the ground, real Kyle Hayes style. I just think when you see players doing that, it's just a sign that they're real confident in their own ability, comfortable on the ball. Um, I thought they had a lot of players behind the ball and, you know, they were quite defensive at times against Tip, and but were real physical and intense and, you know, lots of work rate. And, but the forwards were a bit isolated up front at times. And, you know, I'm just wondering against Kilkenny, would they adopt a similar tactic, do you think? You see, I can I can understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to play, you know, quite defensively because they're trying to play that running game that the likes of maybe Kilkenny or Cork or Galway or even Tipperary at this stage have kind of perfected. Whereas Wexford, when you're only maybe starting to do this in the first year, it takes a little bit of time to get used to it. So I can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to really crowd it in the back. And then once someone like Akira O'Connor is pushing forward from centre back she has runners off the left side side the right hand side but the problem is at times it's a very very draining game it's like Wexford hurlers they try to get so many players behind the ball that you have to be so fit then to get back up into the position that you need to be in as a forward and at times that's what what Wexford struggled against Tipperary because they weren't able to get the players then up the field to support them and to be there for, you know, the, the scoring threat. Because, look, at it's all well and good trying to stop Kilkenny or Tipperary, you know, at one side. But at the end of the day, you have to be up at the other side. And you can't leave. It doesn't matter if it's Katrina Park or Anae Curran who got four brilliant points. They need girls running off the shoulders because Kilkenny defence, we all know how tight and tough they are. And they will just be, you know, thrilled if they see that there's only maybe two or three Wexford forwards up up in the in the attacking side of the pitch. So it's trying to find the, the nice balance between the you know keeping it tight at defense, but then being able to push up and use that energy that's required to get up the field when you need to. Yeah, very true. And um, just mentioning Kilkenny there, they're all Ireland champions, they're league champions. Um obviously they're a superb side. But I suppose this year we've just seen a few glimpses maybe of weaknesses. Um you know, a couple of teams have run in close. Um, even if you take the league, the first game, one eight to six points against Dublin. Um, did a big win then against Offaly. In the quarter final, though, Limerick gave them a right scare and could have easily won that game. You can end up winning by three points. Then in the semi final, Tipperary really had them on the ropes for so long in that game. But like real champions, they finished strong. And I'm just kind of wondering is it the fact they won the All Ireland so late last year in December? Maybe Brian Dowling and the management team kind of give the girls a break. They wasn't maybe doing as much individual training as the other counties were doing. And they're just, you know, maybe a slow build up. And now they're going to peak come quarterfinals, semifinals. Or is there hope there for the likes of Wexford that, that you know, that maybe this Kilkenny team are beatable? Look, without a doubt, Kilkenny will know themselves. The fact that they won a league final this year is, is probably hard to believe in some ways because I, I remember watching that quarterfinal in the league against uh, Limerick. Limerick should have beaten them. In the semi-final, without a doubt, Tipperary should have beaten them. You were thinking, Kilkenny, there's no way back. In the league final against Galway, they were under huge pressure in the first half. They looked quite flat. They didn't look like they were going to, you know, come back the way they did in the second half. And probably the one positive spin I would take out of it is, I think that's a sign of a team that doesn't panic, that may be a sign of a team that, you know, knows how to win when it's when it's really needed. And, and at different stages throughout the league and the championship so far, different players have stood out. In the in the couple of in a couple of the championship games against you know Clare and Westmead, they're expected to win. You know, Kilkenny probably know that they don't have to maybe fully play to their full potential to get, and that's no disrespect to Clare or Westmead, but Kilkenny probably are a little bit further ahead than the likes of Clare or Westmead. So I think maybe Brian Dowling is trying to maybe strengthen his panel, give a few new girls, you know, a chance. You can even see in the goal, one day he's playing Emma Kavanagh, the other day he's playing Laura Norris. So, you know, he's even trying to get Katie Power more game time. So um, I don't think we've seen the true, um, you know, Kilkenny side at this stage. I think they're trying to peak at the right time. I think 
you know, Wexford are going to be in for a really, really tough game. And Kilkenny will have all the experience then, you know, at this stage to, to get over the line. And it's going to be a huge test and a huge battle for uh, for Wexford. But Kilkenny probably will be slightly disappointed that they lost their group game against Galway because for three quarters of that game, Galway were down to 14 players. So that's one little thing that they won't be happy with. But look, Brian Dowlin, um, you know, is very experienced at this stage. And as I said, he knows how to win. And I suppose and Dalton is a huge loss for them as well this year and they need to adjust to that. And But like you said, they have great strength and depth in the panel. That's it. And it's not about maybe replacing and Dalton because and Dalton is the type of player you can't just replace. You can't just throw in someone to do the role that Anne Dalton did, you know, in the Kilkenny team. But you're looking for some of the younger girls who really have stepped up this year, like at different stages. And even in the league final, like Aoife Doyle's goal, like midway through the, the second half, that's a girl who maybe is only kind of, maybe her second or third year kind of consistently playing on the team. And, you know, she put her hand up and took on the Galway defence and got one of the greatest goals you know, in, in the last couple of years. And then you have Katie Nolan, Mary O'Connell, these girls who are helping, especially in the forwards, rather than an over-alliance on maybe Denise Gall at times and Miriam Walsh. I think there's a nice blend between the experienced players and the new girls because defensively, Kilkenny has been very strong, but it's just trying to get the mix of the younger girls coming up to the same level as the more experienced players. And I think probably Kilkenny are getting that right um, in the last couple of years. But look, Anne Dalton, without a doubt, she's, you know, once in a lifetime of a player. I played with her, I played against her, and she's one of the greatest players in the game. So no doubt she is a huge loss. But look, hopefully for Kilkenny, Katie Power will be back in the fall come quarterfinal, semifinal, possibly final. So um, she's a huge addition to have back. So obviously Kilkenny are going to be, you know, probably hot favourites going into this game. They're all our champions, they're league champions. We know how good they are. So what do you think Wexford need to do, you know, if they if they are to have a chance to top them? Well, I think, you know, as I said, Kilkenny have a serious goal threat. And that's one thing that Wexford will be looking to amend after the Tipperary defeat. Because as I said, they were well in that game up until maybe five minutes to go. And then the couple of subs that came on for tip, you know, made the difference. So Wexford can't afford can be, to be conceding three, four goals in that game against Kilkenny. So as I kind of mentioned a few minutes ago, they will be looking to keep it tight. Their matchups will be really, really important. And keeping the, the, the back six nice and tight and Laura Brennan, you know, communicating to her defence because that Kilkenny attack are just, moving all over the pitch and it's hard to kind of stay stay near him so it's about keeping it nice and compact at the back but then having the likes of the wing forwards like the NA Corrins who's my club mate a great player who are able to track back but then get pushing up the field when they need to press on uh, the, the Kilkenny defence and that's going to be crucial and then I suppose a couple of guards like Katrina Parrott, Linda Bulger who maybe had quite games against Tipperary in that last game Wexford will need their big names and their big players playing to their utmost against Kilkenny because without those kind of leaders or those players playing to their uh, you know, most potential, Wexford will struggle. I feel Wexford will need a couple of goals. But look, Wexford have scored seven goals in the, in the three group games. So that's going to stand to them. They will be going in with confidence. And they know that most people are going to be tipping Kilkenny. That will suit Wexford down to the ground. They'll be going in as underdogs, but as I said, if they can hold Kilkenny, you know, um, with, down to maybe a goal or whatever, I give them a good chance, but Kilkenny's experience, I think, will stand to them. Brilliant insight there, Arsa. Thanks very much. So we'll move on now to the Tipperary and Waterford game, um, meeting again in the quarterfinal. Um, I suppose Tip have had, um, you know, they had a comprehensive win over Waterford this year in the league, but in fairness to Waterford, that was their first game of the league while Tip had already played Cork. Um, do you know Waterford probably didn't have the best of leagues um, they ended up in a relegation final which they lost to Dublin but they came back then and bet Dublin in, in the championship um, they put three goals past Cork as well even though they were beaten I know they lost to Limerick in the Munster championship so a bit of an up and down um, season so far you know Tiberi probably going into this game with a better run of form but um, you know I suppose Waterford I think they'll be pleased enough with the performance against Cork um, so what, what kind of game do you think uh, we'll get between these two teams. 
Yeah, I think Pip and Watford are getting well used to playing each other at this stage. You know, it's the the third time they've met in the last four years at this stage. And Tipperary have had the upper hand in, in the previous two um, uh, games. And look, it's it's going to be a tough one for Watford. I feel that Tipperary have improved on last year, whereas I feel maybe this year hasn't went according to, according to plan for Watford. As you mentioned, you know, they got relegated to Division Two League earlier in the season. And even the fact that they it's the third year in a row where they have a new manager, I find it hard for maybe a team when they're trying to develop and make that progress maybe to a quarterfinal or semifinal stage, you need consistency. Whereas you look at Tipperary, Bill Milani is really developing a strong Tipperary team and panel. Whereas Waterford, it's kind of chopping and changing managers. And I think it's having an impact on the girls then themselves because I know every manager is different. And when you're trying to develop a system or a team or a work ethic or whatever, each manager will bring a different thing to it. And I think Watford really haven't found their groove this year. Their league performances were really, really disappointing. The over-reliance maybe on Beth Carton and Eve Rocket, you know, is maybe why they're struggling in some of these games. Because if you hold Beth Carton possibly quite or Neve Rocket to a couple of points, well, then I feel that Watford will struggle to score, um, you know, a huge amount. And in that quarterfinal last year down in down in Cork, I was there and I just felt that Tipperary completely uh, overpowered Watford in every way. They were physically too strong. Their hurling was so much sharper. There was a greater balance to the team. And I just feel that Watford are going to struggle in the quarterfinal because, as I said, I think Tipperary have progressed from last year. I think their panel is stronger um, since last year. And I think their, their team is overall stronger this year too. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there. I know I'm being biased, but I suppose Tip definitely had the upper hand last year and I do feel they've improved as well. Um, losing Claude Quirk at the start of the year was a big blow, but I suppose it happened early in the year and, you know, Bill has used, you know, they made five changes for the Wexford game. And I think that was purely, they're looking down the line to strengthen the panel. I thought Kareem Blair did has been doing really well when she's come on and when she started against Wexford. I thought Sarah Delaney played very well again last day. So, you can see players putting their hands up and um, the panel has definitely been straightened. I suppose the most impressive line for me for tip is the half back line of Eva McGrath, Karen Kendi and Mairead Everson. Would you agree there? Without a doubt. And to me, that was probably the reason why Tipperary won that quarterfinal last year. Look, Karen Kendi pushed up the field, got that crucial goal. But, you know, the two wingbacks as well, you know, super players, Ethan McGrath, Mairead, Everson, brilliant players, well able to hurl, well able to defend first and foremost, but also the delivery into the forward line is just so crucial. And I think Tipperary, you know, even in the league semi-final against um, Kilkenny, obviously they were hugely disappointing uh, to lose against Kilkenny that day. But some of the hurling out of Tipperary was so, so impressive. And they matched Kilkenny in so many ways. And I think they need to look to those kind of games to realise their potential and see that where I would have mentioned that the likes of the Beth Carton and Neve Rocket, there's maybe an over-alliance. But yes, we uh, Tipperary have caught the van in the full forward line, but there's so much more to Tipperary than that. You know, their midfield line, the likes of Roisin Howard, Arena Friday coming on the last day, getting a couple of days. And then you have some of the younger girls, Emer, Emer McGrath and Claude McIntyre, who are so capable of, you know, that goal threat that Tipperary have. And then even Miriam Campion coming on the last day against Wexford, she set up the two goals. So it's like if someone's not playing well, and I haven't even mentioned Orlo Dwyer, and she was missing last year for the quarterfinal st stage. So she's a huge player. She's massive, you know, leader in that Tipperary team. So I think it's a really exciting time for Tip. I think they should be going in with huge confidence. And, you know, they're they're getting nearer and nearer to pushing into that top three. And I think if they can get over the line against Wadford, I think they're going in in a really strong position in the semi-final. Yeah, and I think Wexford probably did them a huge favour as well. You know, it was definitely a big physical challenge for Tip. Uh, you know, the most physical game Tip have gotten this year. Um, no disrespect to Limerick and Offaly. They just tip at too much time on the ball, too much space and... That's where I suppose bad habits are picked up. They had to work really hard for every score against Wexford. And because Wexford defended so brilliantly, we saw the likes of Nicole Walsh, Kareem Blair scoring lovely points from far out. You know, so 
adding all that to the game as well. Um, I suppose, on the other hand, like you mentioned, maybe things aren't going as well for Waterford. A huge loss with uh, Shabelle Harney um, out injured with the cruciate, as was um, revealed there lately. So she's a huge blow for Waterford, of course. Yeah, she, she is. And I don't think Waterford really can afford to be without any of the players. And, you know, I, I, I'm not, I, I'm a huge fan of this Waterford team. I'm not trying to be overly critical, but, and they're a young team, you know, there, there's loads of potential in that back line as well. Lorraine Bray, a super player, an all-star winner. Claude Carl, Kate Lynch, two young girls in defence who are brilliant. Even the addition of Vicky Faulkner into their attack uh, this year. I know Vicky from WIT Ashburn days and she used to be uh, either in cornerback or fullback on the Ashburn team. So I was surprised this year to see her in the full forward line. And it's obviously working because she got 2-1 against, against Cork in the, in the final group game. So she's a brilliant hurler, really intelligent. And I suppose she probably gets her aggression in the tackle from playing as a defender herself. So her in the full forward line definitely does add to it. And Abby Flynn, another brilliant player for Watford. Um, but as I said, you know, even Beck Carton in that final game against Cork, she didn't actually play it because she got injured in the warm-up. So it'll be interesting. I'm sure she will recover and be okay for the quarterfinal. But Probably the criticism I had of Waterford last year, Beth was far too out the field for Waterford. She was no threat to Tipperary. I'd say they were thrilled that she wasn't um she wasn't in the full forward line. And when she did move into the full forward line last year, uh, remember that brilliant save that Anya Slattery um you know made from her in the last couple of minutes. So if I was the Waterford manager, I'd be having Beth as close to the goal as possible because I feel sometimes She's trying to win the ball in her own half back line and solo through the middle and try get the score. And the likes of Tipperary or whoever that will play Waterford, that's not they'll break down that kind of play because as good as Beth is, she's not going to be able to break through three or four players and still put the ball over the bar. So I would like to see her pushing up the field further and then obviously having the likes of Neve Rockers moving between the half forward line and full forward line. But they, they are definitely the two big names to watch going into this game. So Ursula, I was just thinking there for the likes of Waterford uh, or Wexford who are probably underdogs um, going into the quarterfinals or even for a tip when they come up against the Kilkenny's and the Galway's and the Cork. Um, for me, like a big thing is the whole psychological thing. Like I feel like any time Cork play tip psychologically, they're going out every day thinking we're going to win. We're the better team. We, we've beaten tip last year, the year before, whatever. They haven't beaten us in years, you know. And I suppose for Wexford, even against Kikenny, you know, how do they how did they get that mindset where they believe they can beat them? Or even, I suppose, it's more the other way. Like, Kikenny are probably expecting to win, believing that they'll win, have that confidence. I mean, no, you can't be overconfident. But I think, you know, I'm thinking back to your career with, with Wexford, before you made that breakthrough, you know, was there a kind of a mindset shift where you started thinking when you went out and played the Galways, the Tips, the Corks, that, you know, we can beat these, like? Yeah, without a doubt. And I remember, you know, at the time, maybe back in 05, 06, the likes of Tipperary and Cork were the big teams that we were coming up against and probably struggled against and probably felt, and maybe when I look back on it now, we maybe didn't even believe ourselves that we could beat the likes of these teams. And obviously winning games and, you know, getting that little bit of momentum does help. But, you know, some of it does come down to what I would say, and it's easier said than done, but the likes of Waterford, just say, have come up against Tipperary in the last couple of years, or Tipperary against Cork have come up against, you know, have fallen short. And Tip especially are trying to break into that top three. And, you know, they were probably one of the closest they've ever been to beating a Kilkenny, Cork or Galway in that league semi-final. They looked in full control in that game. Kilkenny were, you know, a bit all over the place. They weren't able to handle that physical presence of, of Tipperary. But it was a real sucker punch then when Kilkenny finished the game strong and got those two late goals. And Tipperary went away from that game feeling so dejected. And you couldn't blame him, really. And... I think, obviously, if they could get one big win over that top three team, it would make a huge difference. But that's easier said than done, and it doesn't just happen because they play them so often. You know, my biggest thing is, what are the likes of Tipperary learning each time they play these teams? Because it's all well and good going and playing Cork five times a year and losing to them, but what are they learning, whether that's from the management team or the players themselves? Because 
if you go and play Cork five times and you keep either doing the same things and maybe not reacting to their, to their tactics and maybe not changing things around and having that little bit of flexibility, but also not getting too caught up in their game plan as well. Because I think if you nearly get consumed by what Cork do or what Tipperary do, well, then you're at nothing because each team are different and you have to play to your own strengths. Um, you know, if Tipperary tried to match Cork in certain ways, they probably won't have the upper hand on him. Whereas Tipperary, the last day, one thing that maybe when things weren't going great against Wexford and they were struggling and they were trying to get through that uh, Wexford defence and they weren't able to break the tackle, I felt that uh, Tipperary then, which I, I thought was really positive from a Tipperary point of view, they opted to shoot from distance. And I think that stood to them. Um, whereas in the past, I would have felt that Tipperary would have tried to run into trouble or get past the Cork half back line, just say that are so, so strong, and then Cork overturn them and go down the field and score. Whereas when, when Tipperary in that game against Wexford, they were struggling to get through into the full forward line. And, you know, they will recognise that themselves. But the likes of Nicole Walsh, Arena Friday, these girls got great scores from distance. So it's about having that flexibility and being adapt being adaptive in any given game. But Definitely learning from previous encounters with the game is one thing I would obviously say because you can, I would always go with the mantra that you win or learn. It's not win or lose. You learn from every game. You learn more from a loss. Um, and unfortunately, that's hard to take at times. No one wants to lose. But um, I definitely think Tip are not far off it. And I think if they could get one win against the Kilkenny, Cork or Galway, who knows what could happen because that would bring on the girls so, so much. And I don't think they're too far off it as it is. Brilliant. Okay. Just to summarize up all, you know, the preview of the both games, uh, what are the key battles that you're most looking forward to or the key matchups in both matches? Um, For me, I suppose um, for the Wester Kilkenny game, I think a really interesting battle will be um, whoever picks up the knee skull. I would feel maybe someone like Emma Walsh, who um, is a great player. She's very athletic, quite strong on the ball, well able to hurl it, hurl to and push up the field. Denise now is obviously extremely adaptable and she can play anywhere from midfield into the full forward line. So that's going to be a vital one for Wexford. Um, definitely as well, Miriam Walsh, another huge uh, goal threat and a big player for Kilkenny. She usually probably starts in around the full forward line. And the last day, Anya Lacey, who's a really tall, rangy player, was in full back. And she's lots of experience as well. So I think they're going to be two crucial battles. Um, on the other end, you know, you've Katrina Parra could possibly start fuller corner forward. And I think if Katrina Parra comes up against someone like Claire Phelan or Davina Tobin, that's going to be a really exciting um, uh, matchup. And it'll be key for Wexford because. As I mentioned earlier, Katrina will have to be on the top of her game for Wexford uh, in the quarterfinal. And then for the tip Waterford game, the obvious ones are, um, you know, as I mentioned, Neve Rocket and Beth Carton. So who picks them up? You know, Tipperary are so strong defensively. Mary Ryan, you know, is such a stalwart on the edge of the, the square at full back. If Beth does go in full, full forward, she won't have it easy and Mary, you know, won't fear the challenge either, either. So that's going to be a big one. Then if Neve Rocket, you know, as we mentioned, Tipperary are so strong in the half back line. So she could potentially come up against someone like Maria Eviston or Ethan McGrath, two brilliant players as well. So I think that's going to be a really exciting one. And then obviously Caught is the huge threat, you know, in full forward. And Iona Heffernan has been in there, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Waterford filter back players as well to, you know, keep the, the ball away from her. But there's a huge amount of matchups and lots of changes to the team teams going forward as well. So it's going to be, I think we're going to get two big games, two great games as well. And um, I hope for the game at Camogie, we do. I hope the referees allow the game to be that little bit more physical at times. Let the, you know, keep the free counts down because we all want to see, you know, two brilliant games and we have four great teams in the quarterfinal. Look, Ursula, after talking to you, um, you'll be really looking forward to both games. Um, getting excited here, thinking about them. Can't wait to get down to Porky Cueve to watch both of them. Um, 
when you're when you're previewing matches like this or when you're working for the Sunday game, do you ever um wish that you were back playing yourself in, in the purple and gold? You had so many great days and won so much with them. Um <laughs> well I would, but uh, when I see like Camogie has gone to another level and I think you'd agree, Jar, like from our days of playing Camogie, it's got you know, it's it's developed in into such a fast paced game, you know, brilliant hurlers, like you really there's no hiding at inter-county senior level um and i think all the teams have raised the bar um obviously at times you'd love to be out there you know i'm still playing away with the club but but when you see the commitment and the level and everything at times you're wondering where did i have time to do anything else so it's great to see i'm happy that wexford are back competing at at a knockout stages you know and i think the girls are are really progressing well but i just hope we do get good games because especially when they're televised you want a bigger audience watching, you know, free flowing games, not games that are just a free taking competition between Cot Devan and Beck Carton. There's so much more to these teams than free takers. Obviously, they're brilliant players, but you want to see the rooks, you want to see the hooks, the blocks, you want to see an Anya Slattery save, you want to see a penalty taken by Chloe Fox. You know, you want to see all elements of it. And I just think. In the last couple of years, we've seen some really great games at this at this stage, and I think we we probably had the top six teams left in it. Um, if I'm being honest, I think you know, um, like without a doubt, you know, Kilkenny, Cork, and Galway are the top three. You have Tip edging closer every year, and then you have the likes of Waterford who are trying to get over that quarter fi- final hurdle. And it's great looking to see Wexford competing because I think the game of Camogie does need Wexford there. Um, you know, they've got a huge support always and they bring a lot to the game as well. And as you saw against Tipperary, their physical presence on the field is is something to behold as well. That's brilliant, Ursa. Thanks very much. Um, it's great to have you on the Camogie Report podcast. Uh, like I said, we look forward to two great games. Um, we'll all be hoping for a win for Tipperary, but whatever the outcome, like you said, we're hoping for two great games. And thanks a million for joining us on the Camogie Report podcast. Uh, we hope you all enjoyed watching it. And uh, if you did, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. Thanks very much.